Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, welcome to this next lecture on the MOOC course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. You would recall that in the last class we started talking about utility theory and we looked at uh, the economic interpretation of the utility functions and how we can actually use the utility theory in terms of assigning utils or numerical values amongst various investment alternatives. And then we concluded by looking at an example highlighting the fact that when you talk about utility of a wealth level given the fact that the utility of a wealth level is a random variable we need to calculate what is the expected utility and then we are driven by the maximization of the expected utility amongst different alternatives in terms of investments. In today's class uh, we will elaborate a little more on a notion of the risk appetite of individual investors and we will draw motivation from the fact that the last time we talked about three categories of investors in terms of the risk appetite namely risk averse, risk loving and risk neutral. So, let us begin this lecture uh, with a, a prelude to that discussion and we will then discuss the characteristic of all these three types of uh, in investors uh, uh, from the point of view of the nature of their risk attitude. So, we start off with as I mentioned we will talk about risk attitude. Uh, so, the motivation for this is that we need to recognize the fact that investors have varying appetite and preference for risk and accordingly we dwell upon the three types of investors and you have already introduced uh, them in the previous class namely the investors who have a risk aversion. Uh, who are risk loving and who are risk neutral. So, let us start off first with uh, the investor who have the attitude of risk aversion. So, we first begin with the concept of what is known as the marginal utility of wealth. So, this is a fairly well established economic concept uh, which is defined as the additional utility a person gains from a small change in her or his wealth. Uh, so, the economic rationale for the same is based on the premise that more wealth is more desirable 
then less wealth which is sort of uh, an obvious statement and uh, accordingly it follows that the marginal utility of wealth for every rational investor uh, will always be positive. Uh, so, just to sort of look at the crux of the matter, we say that uh, this concept of marginal utility of wealth is defined as the additional utility a person gains from a small change in his or her wealth. So, that means given a certain wealth level say W1, uh, the corresponding utility is going to be U of W1. So, if it is changed to, if the wealth increases to W2, then the utility obviously will change to U of W2 and then uh, essentially the additional utility that means the difference between u of w2 minus u of w1 as a result of the wealth level changing from w1 to w2 this is the basis of the concept of marginal utility of wealth and accordingly uh, because of the obvious uh, uh, attitude of any uh, any investor that more wealth means they essentially get an additional utility so, obviously, from that point of view, the marginal utility uh, of any rational investor will obviously always end up being positive. From the mathematical point of view, so since this is a mathematical portfolio theory course, so we will have to look at the mathematical uh, perspective of this. So, accordingly, uh, the marginal utility is given by the first derivative of the utility function with respect to the wealth that is a marginal utility of wealth which is given by u prime of w which is du dw and this is greater than 0. All right. Uh, so, uh, another way of looking at it is that u as a function of w, uh, you expect that for a rational investor this is going to be an increasing function and uh, that is the reason why uh, the marginal utility which is defined by uh, the additional increase or it is essentially the rate of change of the utility uh, vis a vis uh, the wealth level. So, that is the reason why the definition of marginal utility in order to capture that relative change in the utility uh, corresponding to a unit change in the wealth level as the marginal utility and since this is an increasing function. So, obviously, the marginal utility defined by u prime of w uh, that is going to be positive. The next step would be to uh, determine whether the marginal utility. So, we now look at the nature of the marginal utility itself. So, we have to determine whether the marginal utility is increasing or decreasing and this is determined by the sign of the second derivative of the utility function. Uh, so, therefore, the decreasing marginal utility. So, it turns out that this is actually a decreasing. So, the decreasing marginal utility 
is given by u double prime of w less than 0 uh, that is uh, d square u d w square this is going to be less than 0. So, this means that your u prime is greater than 0 and u double prime is less than 0 in case of a risk averse investor. So, graphically it will look like this. So, accordingly what you will have is that this is going to be something like this. So, this is an example of a decreasing marginal utility. Uh, so, the interpretation of this is that uh, as suppose that your marginal, uh, your utility, the wealth level changes from W1 to W2, uh, then uh, this difference uh, in the or the change in the utility will be given by this. So, this is always going to be positive since it is an increasing function and you consider two scenarios where your wealth level changes by identical manner. So, in first case it is from W1 to W2 and second case is W3 to W4, but these changes are identical. Then you observe that the additional uh, utility that you get when you change from W1 to W2 is more here than the additional utility that you get here from a change of W3 to W4. So, while uh, so the interpretation of u prime of w greater than 0 is that as your wealth level increases, your utility obviously increases, uh, that means the satisfaction level that you get is, uh, is increasing. But for a risk averse investor, if you are, have identical change in the wealth level, so in this case I say that uh, the wealth changes from w1 to w2 and another scenario when it changes from w3 to w4. Uh, so, that means the w2 minus w1 is taken identical to w4 minus w3. Then you see that u of w2 minus u of w1 which is the consequent change in the utility level or the marginal utility is going to be more than the marginal utility uh, that is given in case of movement from w3 to w4. So, this means that as your wealth level increases, identical increase in the wealth level uh, results in lesser and lesser corresponding increase in the difference of the utilities or the corresponding increase in the utilities and that is the consistent with your statement of u double prime of w being less than 0 uh, while you have u prime of w greater than 0. So, an interpretation of this is that if you have a very a low net worth individual an additional amount of say, say, uh, say 10,000 will give a huge amount of uh, additional utility, but if you have a very rich individual an additional amount of 10,000 uh, or an increase of 10,000 in their wealth level is obviously not going to give that much of additional satisfaction as compared to somebody who has less amount of money and who gets an increase in their wealth level of 10,000. Uh, so, in summary what you can write is that uh, decreasing uh, marginal utility leads to risk averse behavior and economics always assumes that a rational investor is risk averse. Okay, now, we will make a sort of a comparative study of the three types of uh, investors in terms of their risk appetite through a specific example uh, which will then uh, also at the same time reconcile with a general setup. So, accordingly let us begin with uh, the case of an investor. So, suppose an investor has a utility function with decreasing marginal utility. So, it is basically u of w will have u prime positive and u double prime negative. 
Now, uh, suppose that the investor's wealth level level is 1000 and is offered an investment opportunity where the investor can gain an amount of 300. So, let me just identify it with some z tilde uh, with probability half or losing 300 with probability half. And the question, now this investor uh, is risk averse uh, because I have said it is a decreasing marginal utility. So, the question is that should the or would the, so we need to see it from the point of view of the investor that whether he or she would be uh, interested to enter this investment opportunity. And the answer to this is that it uh, depends on investors uh, attitude towards risk. So, I am saying that it depends on investor attitude towards risk because I am going to uh, use the same example uh, to look at all the three cases. Okay, so, let us look at graphically, uh, let us see what this situation looks like. So, this is my wealth and this is my U of W. Now, since I have said that the investor's utility function are decreasing marginal utility, so the graph will look something like this. And let us identify uh, the initial amount of 1000 with the notation W naught. And the gain can be 300, which means that either it can go up to 1300 and let us identify with W subscript plus and it can go down to 700, let us identify this with W minus. Okay. So, that means uh, the corresponding uh, utility of W minus will be here, the corresponding utility for W naught is here and this is nothing but utility of expected wealth before the investment and uh, for W plus the utility is going to be U of W plus. Okay. Now, uh, once you have made the investment, remember that uh, it can either uh, go down to 700 with probability half or it can go to 1300 with probability half. So, the expected utility will be somewhere here. So, this means that this is going to be the expected utility. So, this is going to be the expected U of W. So, uh, in this case, uh, when the investor gains, the wealth increases to, to 1300, uh, which I will denote as W plus is equal to W naught plus Z tilde. Uh, so, I will identify 1000 as W naught. So, please make a note of it. Now, in, uh, in, the, now in, in this case, so, the other alternative is in this case when the investor loses, then the wealth decreases to 700 and you will identify this with W minus which is W naught minus Z tilde. And uh, in the first case, uh, the utility is U of W plus and in the second case, the utility is U of W minus.
Okay. So, thus the expected utility. Uh, so, here you please remember that uh, it can either uh, be u of w plus or u of w minus with identical probabilities half and half. So, thus the expected utility from the investment is E of u w which is half of u of w plus. So, it takes the two values the random variables u of w plus and u of w minus with probability half each. So, that is the reason why we chose u of e w was here which is the corresponding expected wealth level which is half of. So, it is basically half of u uh, w minus and half of u w plus which is at this height. Okay, so, next thing what you can say is that uh, whether or not, so once we have this setup, so whether or not the investor is willing to uh, get into the investment, that means this is like a binomial kind of an investment, uh, depends on whether the investors expected utility increases or decreases by getting into the investment. Uh, so, it is obvious that uh, the investor has an amount of 1000 or W naught and they are obviously going to get into the investment only if they see that they have the possibility of the expected utility being more than the utility of the amount that they are currently holding and that is what is going to drive home their decision. Okay, so, let us now introduce a few notations. So, remember that W naught was the initial wealth level. So, this is uh, U of W naught is going to be the investor's utility of wealth before the investment. Now, there are two possibilities. If E of U W that is the expected wealth after investment is greater than U of W naught then the investor gets into the investment and in the second case if E of u w is less than uh, u of w naught then the investor does not get into the investment. Uh, so, from the figure it can be seen seen that the investment decreases by u of w naught minus e of u w and so the investor will not get into the investment and this is a classic example of risk aversion behavior. So, remember uh, just going back to the graph you observe carefully here this is the wealth level that the investor would have without making the investment and this is the wealth level that they would they are expected to have if they invest and you observe that this wealth level after investment is less than this wealth level and the difference between these two that means u of w naught here minus expected utility of w that is u of w naught minus expected utility of w this is going to be the investment decrease as a result of the investment uh, or the value decrease of the utility and then that is the reason why the investor is not going to get into the investment because the investor is risk averse and this has happened because the graph is a concave graph. 
that is the reason why we have this quantity ending up being negative. Now uh, note that a risk averse investors utility function will always be concave. Right? So, this means that it is going to look something like this. Now, uh, however, uh, the risk averse investor can get into risky investments if they see that the odds are in their favor. So, that means if the expected utility is going to be more than the utility of their current wealth level, then of course, uh, the risk averse investors are likely to get into the investment. So, risk aversion does not mean that the investor will not take uh, any risk, it just simply means that they were willing to take the risk only if they see that their expected utility. Uh, which is a manifestation of the likelihood of making a you know a gain uh, is more than the whatever is their initial investment. So, E of U w if it ends up being greater than your U of w naught uh, then obviously, they will uh, get into a risky investment. It is just that they are going to be their risk averse nature uh, will ensure that uh, they will have uh, this criteria set up in order to determine whether they want to get into the risky investment or not. Okay, uh, so, now we uh, come back to the example. So, uh, for the point of view of, of the investor uh, getting into the risky investment decreases the utility by u of w naught minus e of u w. Okay, so, now suppose that the investors uh, utility after the investment equals the utility of holding a certainty equivalent uh, which will abbreviate with C E amount of cash. Uh, so, to the definition for certainty equivalent is the certain amount of cash that leaves the investor indifferent between a risky investment and the certain amount of cash, uh, which is C, the certainty equivalent. So, we will look at this, uh, we will revisit the graphical interpretation of this. So, you have W and uh, uh, so, I just want to add one more thing. Uh, so, here this means that uh, you will have E of U W is equal to U of C. Okay, so, this gives the definition of certainty equivalent. 
so in this case, so let us look at the graph again. So here we had uh, W minus W naught W plus. Uh, so, so here again, this is going to be U of W minus U of W naught and uh, here you will have u of w plus okay and then uh, you join these two lines and this point so here uh, from this point i will calculate the expected utility of w now, uh, please understand that uh, the expected utility of uh, W, so what you could have is that this expected utility of W, if it is equivalent to the utility of a certain wealth level here, then this wealth level is called certainty equivalent. Uh, so just to uh, explain this, so what we have is that once we have made the investment, then the corresponding expected utility, so in the previous example it was given by half into u of w plus and half of u of uh, w minus, this gives the expected utility to be this value here. Now we extrapolate this utility, value of utility to hit the utility curve and then I drop down to calculate the corresponding value on the wealth axis w which gives me this utility. So, this certain this amount of money is what you call as the certainty equivalent and it is different from W naught in this case. So, accordingly what happens is that so there is a difference between W naught which is the original amount and the certainty equivalent or the amount that gives the same utility as the expected utility. So, this difference that we have here this is known as the risk premium and the risk premium this is given by phi of w naught uh, z tilde this is given by e of w tilde that is the expected wealth uh, that you have minus c e okay so in this case the risk premium uh, so here w naught uh, is what we write as e of w tilde so the risk premium is nothing but uh, this is going to be always greater than 0 for risk averse investors. So, in summary and this is the summary for the risk averse investor, the utility function for a risk averse investor is concave and has the following characteristics that u utility of the expected wealth is going to be so that means uh, uh, this one here this is going to be greater than expected utility of w and which is equivalent to u prime of w greater than 0 and u double prime of w is less than 0. All right, we next come to uh, what is known as the risk loving behavior, which is the opposite of the risk uh, uh, averse behavior. Uh, so, in this case, uh, the risk loving investor. Uh, typically has convex utility function and will make so and the risk loving investor will make riskier decisions about the same 
investment uh, that we just considered. So, let us look at this graphically again. So, this is w u of w and it is a convex function. Now, this is w minus. So, uh, correspondingly I will have u of w minus. Uh, this is w naught. So, this is going to be u of w naught which is nothing but the uh, utility of the expected wealth as before. And this is w plus. So, this is going to be uh, the utility of w plus. Now, what is the expected utility? So, the expected utility will be basically given by the line joining these two points. So, it is basically half of utility of w uh, minus plus half of utility of w plus and then uh, so this is the corresponding value that we have here and so uh, what we will have now is this value is going to be expected utility of the investment. And once I extend this here, then this point here is going to be my certainty equivalent and this is going to be the risk premium. So, here uh, you observe that the expected utility from the investment, so that is here E of U of W, this is, so uh, this is the expected utility from the investment. This is greater than u of w naught. Uh, so, in other words, the investment by the risk loving investor uh, increases the utility by uh, E of u w minus u of w naught. So, now we start off with the uh, notion of certainty equivalent. So, uh, the risk lovers, so certainty equivalent in this case will be defined in a, a similar way. So, the risk lovers utility after the investment equals the utility or utility of uh, holding a certain amount of cash. cash namely certainty equivalent. So, that means in this case the risk premium uh, which again is denoted by phi w naught of z tilde this is equal to E of w tilde minus C e or uh, less than 0. Uh, so, in summary For a risk loving investor, U of E W is less than the expected utility of W, right. So, this is less than expected utility of W. And uh, this implies and implies by that u prime of w is greater than 0, which is always the case. Uh, but in this case, I will have u double prime of uh, w greater than 0 because this is a convex function, right. So, this is a convex function. 
Okay, so finally we come to the uh, last uh, category of investor, namely the risk and neutral behavior. And we will consider the following graph. So, again we look at W and it is going to be a straight line. So, we have W minus, so this is going to be U of W minus, then uh, we have uh, W plus, so I have here U of W plus. And then we have uh, W naught here. So, this is going to be U of W naught, which is nothing but the utility of expected wealth uh, and which is nothing but, uh, so this is actually the utility of the wealth level, uh, utility of the expected wealth and uh, this is the same as expected utility of wealth and so the certainty equivalent is going to lie at W naught. So, this means that if the investor has a linear utility function then the investor is indifferent about the investment and the reason why the inv investor is indifferent about the investment is because we have u of w naught utility of initial wealth is the same as the expected utility of the wealth after the investment. So, in this case the risk premium is uh, equal to phi of w naught z tilde is equal to e of w tilde minus c e which is equal to 0. So, in summary Uh, u of E w is E of U w and uh, this is equivalent to U prime of w greater than 0 which of course has to hold in case of utility functions, uh, but U double prime of w is equal to 0. So, this is because of the linear property. All right. Uh, so, what we have done so far, uh, just to summarize this, uh, we talked about the three different kinds of investors and uh, we identified the characteristic of the each of the investors and uh, we defined what is going to be the risk premium and through an illustrative example, uh, we have established that in case of a risk averse investor, you will have a concave function, uh, in case of a risk loving investor, you will have a convex function and in case of a uh, risk neutral investor will have a linear function and by functions I here mean that what is going to be the form of the utility function u of w and in each of the cases obviously the u prime of w is positive, uh, but in case of the risk averse we have u double prime less than 0 uh, and in case of uh, risk loving we have u double prime greater than 0 and in case of the risk neutral investor we have u double prime being equal to 0. All right, uh, so now we will look at the three different examples. So, each example pertains to uh, the three kinds of risk, uh, risk, in, uh, uh, risk appetite. So, let us look at example A for the risk neutral uh, investor. So, you consider an investment of 1000 and uh, this investment is such that you could have a gain of 200 with probability half and there could be a loss of 200 with probability half. And here uh, suppose the utility function is the log utility. So, log utility as you can see it is a, it's a concave function and uh, the question is uh, what is the CE and what is the risk premium? All 
Okay, so let's try to answer this question. Now, uh, since u prime of w is 1 over w, remember wealth is always positive, so this u prime of w is greater than 0 and u double prime of w is equal to minus 1 over w square which is less than 0. So, uh, it follows that, so the investor is risk averse. Now, what is going to be the expected utility of this? The expected utility is going to be uh, the utility, uh, so wh what is the amount of money then you can get? You can basically go from 1000 to either 1200 with probability half or you can come down to 800 with probability half. So, the respective utilities are going to be natural log of 1200 and the natural log of 800 with the respective probabilities being half. So, it is the utility into the respective probability C added up. So, that gives us the expected utility and this turns out to be equal to 6.8873. Now, my question was to find out what is the certainty equivalent and, uh, and uh, henceforth uh, figure out what is the risk premium. So, by definition of certainty equivalent E of UW is natural log of CE. So, remember that E of expected utility of W is the utility of the certainty equivalent and the utility function is uh, log of uh, w. So, this is going to be log of c. Remember that this is a natural log. All right. So, what does this mean? This means that certainty equivalent is going to be the e raised to the expected utility and what is the expected utility? This is going to be E raised to 6.8873 and this is turns out to be 979.80. And therefore, the risk premium is going to be the original amount all right, and uh, minus the certainty equivalent 979.80 which is 20.20. Okay, now let us look at an example uh, pertaining to the risk loving investor. So, it is the same framework. Uh, so, the same investment as example A. Uh, but we now have the utility function to be w square. So, uh, you, you observe that uh, u prime of w is equal to twice w uh, which is greater than 0 and u double prime of w is equal to 2 which is greater than 0. Uh, so, the investor, so from this 2 we can conclude that the investor is uh, risk loving. Now, uh, what is going to be the, so remember again with a one investment of 1000, it can go up to either 1200 with probability half or down to 1200 with probability half. So, accordingly the expected utility is going to be the utility values. What are going to be the utility values? It is going to be utility of 1200 is uh, 1200 square and the utility of 800 is 800 square. Multiply this by half and add them to get the expected utility. So, this turns out to be 1040000. Now, uh, to determine the certainty equivalent, so we go back to the definition and this is going to be the expected utility of W is equal to utility of C e and since the utility function is a quadratic function, so this is going to be C e square. So, which implies that the certainty equivalent is going to be square root of expected utility of W, uh, which is square root of this. So, this is square root of 1040000 and this is 1019.80. And so, by definition, the risk premium is the original amount 1000 minus certainty equivalent 1019.80 this is minus 19.80. So, to conclude our discussion, uh, I look at the last example. So, in this case, you will have uh, the same uh, framework as 
uh, example A again, uh, but in this case I will let the utility function to be linear function. So, then u prime of w is equal to 1 and u double prime of w is equal to 0. So, the investor is risk neutral. So, therefore, what is going to be the certainty equivalent? The certainty equivalent obviously is going to be the same as your original amount 1000 and uh, consequently the risk premium is going to be equal to 1000 which is the original amount minus certainty equivalent which is uh, which is given here and then this being adds up being to be 0. Okay, uh, so this uh, brings us to the end of uh, this lecture. Uh, just to summarize what we have done again, so we have extended upon the concept of utility functions that we had uh, discussed in the previous class and we looked at uh, two key characteristics for each of the three different kinds of investors in terms of risky appetite, uh, in terms of uh, risk appetite namely risk neutral, uh, sorry risk averse, risk loving and risk neutral and identified them in terms of the nature of the graph namely concave, convex and linear and in terms of uh, the marginal utility and uh, whether the marginal utility is diminishing, increasing or uh, simply equal to 0. And in order to illustrate uh, this point, uh, these three different nature of uh, investors, we consider an identical example, but with different utility functions defined in a way that is consistent with the concavity, convexity and linearity property of the three kinds of investors and each of the cases we uh, derive what is going to be their certainty equivalent and what is going to be their risk premium. So, this brings us uh, to the end of this discussion and from the next class we will continue uh, uh, more discussion on this in terms of uh, uh, certain uh, parameters that are used in, uh, in case of uh, uh, capturing the risk appetite and then we will move on to talking about uh, utility theory in the paradigm of uh, portfolios. Thank you for watching. Thank you.